G'day everyone, welcome back to the channel. We're uh, shifting a few users, oh sorry, shifting a few users around today. Um, had a little bit of a stuff up in that I broke my phone and I've had to get a new one. Um, all the footage from all the other stuff that's on my phone that I keep promising you as I'm slowly getting through it is still there, but it's in a mess in Google Photos. So I've got to go sort back through that. But I'll just sort of get this out today. Um, yeah, shifting a few sheep and I've got a job on with some new jewels in the tractor. We're uh, upgrading from snap locks to bar axles, so it is pretty exciting. I know it might seem pretty boring to a lot of you, but uh, yeah, the big tractor, she's, she's not light, she's 12 tonnes, so. Uh, 27, 28,000 pounds, and the snap locks have not been very nice to use. The, the wheels sort of flex and bend and twist, and, and they were too small. But uh, first up, we'll get the sheep shifted. So, how cool are working dogs, eh? There's a little over 600 sheep in that mob, two deaths. They've just come out of this paddock, and they haven't gone through this open gate because, well, they wouldn't, but they're about to. And that one little dog that weighs like 25 kilos. Here's the mind power to trick all those sheep to think that he is scarier than me. And they're going to run past me straight through that gate. With the help of some barking hunterways in the kennels that probably shouldn't be doing that. Easy as that. So they're going to go in with those calves up there and then up on top of that hill because the big fat ewes are coming into here with a bean because we've got bugger all feet at the moment and I need to make use of everything we've got. So I'll spend a day in here. I'll go on that bank there for a couple of days and then just through there there's some rough stuff you can see where they're going to go as well. But yeah, hey Slim. Hey dude. Now Slim doesn't like cameras very much so... Hey Slim. Hey dude. Hey Slim. Good man. Hey. Very underappreciated the old working dogs, aren't they? So those ones were just over that hill and they're now up on top of that hill. And now we've got these ones here. These are the fat girls. Ones that are in pretty good nick. They're going to go into that paddock, round the road and then back to where those other ones were right about there. Will they turn the right way, which is not right? Shut up Pearl. Looks like they might. It's always been a wee bit of a scary gateway this one because uh, obviously if they push too tight they fall into the river. So we sort of try and liberate them a wee bit. Keep them all back there and sort of just keep a bit of pressure on and, and yeah, not let them go through too fast. That said, there's only 900 in this mob so it's uh, not too much of a challenge. When you get 15, 16, 1800 or for a very small period between my dad, uh, weaning and shearing about 2300 a mob. Um, yeah, that can be a wee bit scary, but uh, they're behaving pretty nicely. Got a couple of pukekos or swamp hens just right up the front, and the girls don't want to run past them, so you know, there might be a way. We might have to fire a hunt away up the side yet, but we'll see how we go. Well, they're moving, they're moving. Ooh, we dust devil in the middle of the road there. See that? Quite hard case. Yeah, there they go, out in the paddock out there. The sheep scared them away. Come on girls! No, we won't wait any longer. Well I go, Paul! There we go, just the nudge they needed. It's pretty safe on that bridge. Good girl. Quiet. Now this one doesn't give a crap about the camera. Hey, do you? Hey girl. And across the main road they go. As long as they don't all turn around and come back out. Gotta get the old stock signs down. Now I know they're not the uh, conventional sign that you're supposed to have, but you gotta admit, they're rather effective. And there the girls go making their own way out of the sheep yards. So they're just going to that paddock there. It's always quite nice seeing them all the sheep string out like that. Oh, so it's been a bit of a big day. Um, I got these lambs in this morning. There's 1,600 and something in the mob. 
uh, Sarah come and weighed them for me, my wife, and that was awesome. It took a fair while because they don't want to run very fast for some reason, these regors. Anyway, uh, these are the middle ones. Just taking the wee ones away. Um, so the lambs left on farm are only averaging about 37 kilos, which is not huge. But we've killed a fair few more than normal. Um, yeah, and it's been dry. And it is really, really, really starting to hurt. Uh, sort of wondering what we're going to do if Southland doesn't get some decent rain soon. We're going to have to... We've got rid of pretty much all the cattle. Hopefully in the next couple of weeks the rest will be gone. Um, we've sort of got rid of as many lambs as we can. We just shorn all these the other day, so... We can't really uh, kill anything for three weeks. That's just a... Uh, one of the union things for the works, the, the lambs, the wool's not long enough for the workers to grab a hold of, so they need three weeks, one of them, which is fine. Um, that said, there's not really many in there that we can kill, weight was, size was. Sort of run out of options for stores because the store ones only go up to a certain weight, and we'll, yeah, got rid of all them. Uh, yeah, so, <laughs> matter of gritting our teeth and bearing it, we've still got urea as an option. I put a bit on the other day, put four tonne on, but, uh, it doesn't work too well if the grass isn't growing, so might be a big push on that when the grass does grow. It's expensive, I don't really want to, but we've got to have enough feed to go in the window. On the plus side, crop's looking good. But anyway, back to these lambs. So there's about 200 and something drafted out into a mob that are ready to go to the works. Like I said, there's still probably got another oh, 12, 14 days before they can actually go. It was about a week ago we, should, we finished, started, started shearing. So they'll be right at two and a half weeks. Um, then we've got there's 800 wee ones that have just gone away, and then there are all those guys hidden away. So they're going to go and they're going to have two paddocks of young grass, and the big ones which are at the front of the yards are going to have the bottom paddock. And hopefully they'll do quite well. Big girls on the move this morning. Oh, well, this mob actually went the right way. They didn't duck back out that way like the other mob did. That's all right. Yeah. Girls are holding up quite well because they've been getting a, a fair thrashing feed wars. There's no doubt about that. But that is the joys of having a, a green drought, as we call it. Still though, look at that. Might have to try and get a little bit of fertiliser on too, I think. Um, still got 40 tonnes sitting in the bin, just, just right over there. Um, and toying with the idea of putting another 25 on, so yeah, better make it happen. And just like that, they found the gate. That is, uh, oh, that's safe enough. That's a narrow enough crossing there. Um, oh, I'm not too worried about that. They'll get through there right. Yeah. So they're going to go on that bank, which goes right around that way. Just a bit does a full circle. Goes way around the other way. And they can have, I don't know, two, three, four days in there. There's only, there was 966 years in that mob when I counted them out. The start of January, so uh, yeah, I'll be right there for a few days about 12 or 13 hectares on that bank. <clears throat> and I really want to get these thistles all mine too. So, one, two, and was, you can see that track heading around there. There's another wee island around there. Hopefully, we can get the mow around there. So, we've got another wee job on this morning, which is uh, something I've never done before. Got this wee mob of ewe lambs in the yards. Um, there's about 45 there. Got a mate up in Ranfurly is wanting to buy a few. They've just bought a farm last year and they just wanted to buy some ewe lambs. Yeah, it's in it's in Ranfurly, which is sort of one of the driest parts of the country for most of the year. Um, but they've managed to get they've called the farm the Fort Rock Flat. It's well they call it a swamp, it's wet. Uh, which means in an area like that that it grows a lot of grass, but they do have to be very mindful of feet. And we have very very good feed on our Romneys in this country, not just on this farm but as a whole. Um, and I guess just because a mate he thought he'd ask me for some ewe lambs, so we're going to sort them up. Got to go through, they've been shorn, so we've just got to go through and make sure that the shearers haven't nicked any of the tits off. Um, with our own replacement ewe lambs, they know to mark any that they do. They don't nick many, I think there was one or two out of 650 this year. Um, and to be fair, one of them definitely would have been fine, we just don't take the risk if they haven't got a working teat to make milk out of uh, they can't rear a lamb so yeah we'll check up on that and then we will put them across the scales get a weight for them now uh, they want to know what they're going to weigh because they want to make them as hoggets um, which is yeah I'm still not sure I mean they're as good as any other lambs are going to be out there um, just Romney's and mating hoggets I'm still not not sold on but with what they're doing up there 
they're going to be fed pretty well. They're not going to see a hungry day. They're going to have a very cruisy winter. It'll be cold, but they'll have feed. And, uh, yeah, they'll be pretty happy where they're going, I think. Probably should have said two. So um, these are ones that we wouldn't keep. These are actually probably bigger than the average of our ulams. But they're triplet-born, so a lot of them are um, born from a triplet, raised as a single or a twin, possibly even a triplet. Um, none of them should be from terminal use because the terminal use all swore a pole dorset ram and these have all got nice black noses so they are romneys there's the odd one in there that's got a bit of a pink nose i'll probably pull out one just there it's not bad but it's it's probably enough for me to say it's not a romney but we'll see and then there's that wee fella there's not supposed to be in there that one so yeah anyway better get to it so literally all we're doing i'll see if i can do this with one hand grab uh, come on, girl. Come on, girl. Up we go. No, uh, wee bit challenging with one hand there. Dip them up. Come down here and just check. One, no cuts. Two, no cuts. Good as gold. So, as expected, there was uh, yeah, no cut tits, which is great. So now we're just going to run across the scales, get a weight from him. The idea of getting this weight is just so that he knows, or him and his partner, know what they weigh to get an idea of how easy they're going to be to make. Um, so we've got them sort of minimum 45 kilos uh, in May and they're going to be, I'm guessing they'll be 35, 36 at the moment at the start of March. So they've got two and a bit months to uh, put on 10 kilos which should be, should be reasonably achievable. And there we have 38 ULAMs. Going to be away to a new home the next few days, I think. He's uh, sending a truck down, so yeah. When he gets here, he gets here. Now, we wouldn't normally worry about going through and checking the tits on a mob of u lambs that were selling like that. We would trust the shearers. Uh, in that instance, the shearers were 100% right. To be fair, we've never had an issue with the current shearers um, nicking tits and not marking them, and they don't nick massive amounts either tiny tiny just just the old time it happens it's an accident um yeah but just because it's a mate and yeah you don't sort of it's always awkward doing business with mates you don't really want to screw your mates over <laughs> even if it's an accident and accidents do happen you just don't want to do it so yeah but no that should be good look miss chicken that is not a sensible place to lay your eggs have you got one in there yet no you go away and lay it somewhere else Right, so we've just got this one paddock to come top. There's not really much in here. We might just do a few thistles and stuff, but uh, we might do the whole thing yet too. And then we'll get this other jewel on. I'll show you what we've done there, and we'll get some fertilizer on. Have run into a slight hiccup in that I've got that to do a bit of filming for you guys, but my new phone does not have a magnet, uh, steel plate on it, rather. That's got the magnets there. It doesn't have the steel plate, so I can't do that. So, might be some uh, bumpy footage. So uh, here we go, we're just mowing the thistles, there's uh, not enough seed here in the rest of the paddock to worry about, we'll just be wasting fuel, a tiny wee bit there, but it'll be right. just going to mow these thistles down, because we are winning that battle slowly, and then we'll drop the mowers off and go put this jewel on, and the weight block, and the uh, fruit spreader. There goes both mowers off. So we've had a bit of an upgrade in the jewel area, jewel wheels for the back of the tractor. The main one, um, I burst the tyre a wee while back, sorry, can't see me that light. Burst the tyre a while back, trying to get through a dodgy gap with the front mower on, worrying about the mower, and I didn't really, I missed it by about three inches. And the left jewel went straight into a gate dog, so not ideal. Um, tried to find a second hand tyre, I've wanted to go up a size for a long time. They're a 420, 80, 46, and I've always wanted to go to a 480, 80, 46. They're a perfect match on the old CVX case we used to have, but they've always been a wee bit small on this tractor. But anyway, so these two here are the old ones. That's the one that I haven't punctured. That's the one that I have. Not really worth fixing when it's going to cost four or 500 bucks to fix. That's off the team. That's off the team. These are the new ones I got. They're not new, by any means, but uh, new to me. But the biggest thing is, we've gone from doing it cheaply, which isn't really that cheap with snap locks, to proper bar axle jewels. 
which is this style. So had to get a set of these. They were incredibly cheap from a mate, from a local contractor that does our baleage over there. Um, very, very cheap. These were not so cheap. Um, brand new, they were going to be four grand a set. That was everything. Bolts, wedges, everything. I uh, managed to get second hand ones for two and a half. Look, it's probably realistically not much of a saving. They're not quite as nice as new ones, but they do the job. Um, this one's out of America. I got them from New Zealand, but this one's out of America because uh, that, no, I can't get those out. That's a UNF thread. That's a UNC thread. I come around this side, so there they are all set up. Uh, this one has a metric thread there and a metric thread on the inside, so yeah, it took a few minutes to work out what was going on there. But is what it is, I've still got 1500 bucks in the bank. Admittedly, I've got to pay tax on that 1500 bucks, but hey, that's called cool making money. Yeah, so a bit of a win, really. I can hopefully sell these. Where are we? Not those. Yeah, those ones there to a mate for pretty much what it's cost me to set this up. Um, we paid a lot more than that. Yeah, paid a lot more for that for them when we got them, but we've run seven or eight years out of them now. And yeah, they're down a tire, and the other tire is pretty bald. So happy to lose out a wee bit on those if it means it doesn't cost me anything to switch over to this. But yeah, yesterday was a big job because see how that is bolted around the inside? Yeah, they were on the outside. So what I had to do was take these out, then pull the whole wheel out a bit, undo those bolts which were on this side because the wheel was over here, pull the whole thing out. I couldn't really film it because health and safety wouldn't be very happy. Lean the wheel right over with the hub inside but unbolted. Roll it back about a foot, 18 inches. Put a prop under the wheel so it was held out here on a big angle. Go around the other side. Pull that thing out which on its own weighs about 40 kilos. Stand the wheel back up. Put that on that way. Put the wedges in loosely. Come back around here. Admittedly the wheel's out about here at this point. Um... Get all those done up, <laughs> yeah, then come back around here again, put the wedges on, tight, or get the wheel right in, get the wedges tight, go around, make sure everything's super tight as it should be, and uh, repeat the process on that side. So the reason for that, we had this side set up with the wheel out where it was, I've damaged one bolt down in there, and I'm struggling to get it out. The car's thread should be fine, but when these come off for winter, I'll get an engineer to fix that. Anyway, yeah, we had a very, very fine gap in here, and as you can see there, and there they were rubbing, and these tyres are like $7,000 a piece. These ones, not much cheaper. I don't really want to damage them. So we needed to get that gap bigger. Um, see there, we don't want them touching down the bottom, and we're already out off the edge of the axle, which that is not of major concern. But it's not ideal either. Got a mate who wants to swap me some uh, same size rims, so the, just the steel rim. Uh, he'll keep his tyres, I'll keep mine, but his tyres have got a, a bigger offset in the dish. So we've got two options there. We can either have the wheels wider, which isn't really an option, uh, or we can push that hub back in a wee bit so it's fully catching on the axle. Um, biggest issue I'm going to have, I think, I won't know for sure to get them on a measure, but I think we're going to be 12 and a half feet wide. Um, now most of the gates in this place are, well every paddock pretty much has access through a 15 foot gate so I'm not too worried about that but there's the bridges so one, what is it, it's 30 hectares of our farm is only accessible by going over one or four bridges two of them we own, they are not up to handling that kind of weight the other two are the public road bridges which are not 13 feet wide so I've got to be a little bit careful, I think I'll get across at the 12 and a half, we'll find out today um, but if I put his wheels on and go wider, <laughs> yeah, we're not going to fit across those bridges, which is a bit frustrating because with the weight of the machine and the bulky together, I do like to run the jewels because I just, yeah, soil compaction issues. The more weight you can spread that, uh, the more area you can spread that weight over, the better it's going to be. But to make this job a whole lot easier, because those hubs had some pretty horrid threads in the castings, I did have to go and buy myself a new toy. Milwaukee fuel three quarter inch rattle gun. Just got the wee batteries for now, that's all we need, but uh, serious bit of kit. 
wasn't cheap, but nothing good new ever is, so should have it for a fair while. Oh, that's a bit annoying. Our trolley jack doesn't have the power to lift her up. Kind of figured that might be the case, but uh, I was optimistic we could just take the weight off the tyre. But no, we've got to lift it right up. So, go get the bottle jack, do it the slow weight. Never a fast process. And there we are, we're centred. We've just got to uh, get the lugs in the right spot. Now they are. Which way are we looking? In there. Right. Not far off halfway. Gotta go back that way. Might take a wee bit of effort. I don't think I can do that one handed, but we'll try. Crowbar under there. And left. Oh. Go back to that one. Not just the easiest job. No, we're not there yet. Right, you've seen what I'm doing, I'm going to stop recording until we get there, it's quite hard. And, there we have it. Get some bolts in, rattle them up and we'll be away. Damn, that thing's savage. Right, we've got one bolt that didn't want to go in, so I'm just going to leave it out for now. We've got nine there, they are definitely good to go. Um, I'll find out what's going on there in a while. We'll have the mowers back on in a wee while, so I suspect the thread just in, in the in the hub there's a wee bit off because that one it didn't look too bad until I forced it in a wee bit and pulled it out and it looked like that and I went oh no we'll just leave that so we'll find out and that is where you do wonder if it might have been cheaper to go new but uh we've done this like I say we've still got well, in the bank because I did it for 100 bucks with the bolts but uh that's not the end of the world and she's looking pretty bloody sharp that's the way Jill should be isn't it bar axle carrying all the weight you can see why i got these tires cheap but for what we're doing i think they'll hold up for a wee while they haven't got tubes in them yet and uh yeah pretty sharp so the fertilizer we're putting on is super phosphate it is predominantly prilled um but it does have a bit of dust in it and i'm just trying to decide a wee bit of breeze up and the paddocks that are going to go so right on the boundary with another neighbor now we do like the neighbour, don't get me wrong, they're bloody good neighbours, but I don't know if I like them enough to be throwing the free fertiliser, so I'll get this weight block on, I'll get the bulky on, we'll grease it up, fuel everything up, and then we'll decide what's happening. I think it'll be right. If not, we've got that wee paddock of young grass to go sow out, so we've got to run the max still through it, and uh, yeah, just run the max still through it and drill it, it'll be fine. Doesn't matter if it's a bit bumpy, but uh, yeah, let's get on with it. mode right so that one's all greased up that one's all greased up that one is near enough and uh, we are good to load some ferret <laughs> 